The hand belongs to an old friend of Langdon's, who's been kidnapped by the villain Malak, a man named Peter Solomon. Solomon runs the Smithsonian Institution, but he's also a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. This is the headquarters of the Scottish Rite Freemasons in Washington, D.C. They call it the House of the Temple, and it's where we talked with Dan Brown, who wove the secrets of the Masons into the taut rope of his story. One character is being elevated to the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite. Uh, it's a rather intense ritual. He drinks wine, which is to represent blood out of a skull. How much of that is fact and how much of that is fiction? This is a real ceremony. The ceremony is described accurately. The fiction comes in as to whether or not it still happens at this moment in history in this room. Brown's villain, Moloch, is the man drinking the wine. He's journeyed deep into Freemasonry to find out its secrets. And so will we. Moloch is fiction. But how much of the ritual is real? Dan Brown's book is very exciting. And like any good work of fiction, it has to involve both truth and error to make it believable. Arturo de Hoyos is the grand archivist and grand historian of the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite, and himself a 33rd degree Mason. We don't perform the 33rd degree in this building. We don't confer it at night. The candidate is too young. The members are dressed wrong, and the ceremony's wrong. Maybe they don't do the ceremony in this building, but there's evidence Freemasons have done it. Brown can quote multiple historical sources. What's the truth? To find out, we have to delve into the distant past. Masonry, in many respects, is a historic mystery. Mitch Horowitz is the author of the new book, Occult America. He's a scholar of esoteric religions, and secret societies. Masons themselves cannot agree on the nature of their own origins and background. Masonry may be the only modern organization for which that's true. The origins of the Freemasons are shrouded in mystery. Art de Hoyos outlines the simplest theory. Freemasonry developed primarily in medieval Scotland and England with the stonemasons guilds and societies. In other words, the first Masons were literally that stonecutters, the men who built the great cathedrals of Europe and who wanted to guard their trade secrets. They developed a system of secret signs and secret passwords. De Hoyo says the tradesmen also started another system associated with Freemasonry, the so-called Three Degrees. The apprentice, fellow of the craft, and master mason still used in Freemasonry today. So is the symbol of a square and compass, mason's tools, with the letter G, signifying both geometry and God. At meetings, Masons wear elaborately decorated aprons, symbolic representations of the ones worn by working stonemasons. But some say there's much more to Freemasonry, a deeper, older, more mystical side. Freemasonry has been a vessel, a channel, for some very ancient ideas. In fact, some Masons say the group originated in the Holy Land, in biblical times with the builders of Solomon's temple. Many Masonic symbols are even older than that. The all-seeing eye, the pyramid, the obelisk. It drew very deeply upon the symbols of pre-Christian religion because it believed that it was part of a chain of a spiritual search for truth that was older than any modern or contemporary religion. In the novel, Moloch believes the Masons know mystical secrets that will make him an all-powerful demon. He infiltrates the group, kidnaps its leader, and uses blackmail to try to get what he wants. That's fiction. But in fact, their free thinking about religion once caused the Vatican to denounce the Masons as satanic. And in the 1800s, Masons in upstate New York were accused of murdering a man named William Morgan who threatened to expose their secret rituals. Today, the web is full of anti-Masonic material. I frequently run into people who have heard of a couple of things about Freemasonry and no more. We killed William Morgan and we worship the devil and that's about all they've heard of us. Those people might be surprised to hear this. The father of our country was a Freemason. There's no question of this. And historians agree that some principles of Freemasonry 
became cherished principles of the United States. Freemasonry was one of the earliest societies to advocate self-rule. We elected our own leaders, we had a secret ballot, we had a separation of powers, we were governed by a constitution. All these elements were very familiar to the Founding Fathers. But remember, Freemasons also had some radical ideas about religion. And as Dan Brown's hero, Robert Langdon, races Moloch through Washington, D.C., to find the secrets of Freemasonry, he reveals little-known facts about the Founding Fathers that might shock some readers. There was a statue that sat in the Capitol. It was George Washington as a god. Coming up, the mysteries of the Masons. Sometimes it is said we have no secrets. Nothing could be further from the truth. When Secrets of the Lost Symbol continues. Hidden away on the lower level of the Masonic House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., there's a remarkable painting not many people have seen. George Washington, the first president of the United States, wears the decorated apron of Freemasonry. Nearby are the square and the compass, traditional symbols of Freemasonry. The painting is described in Dan Brown's best-selling novel, The Lost Symbol. It's a cornerstone laying ritual, and essentially a date is chosen that is auspicious from an astrological standpoint. And there will be certain blessings that are given when this cornerstone is laid. And the idea is that whatever is to take place in that building will have a solid and auspicious beginning. And what building is George Washington, Freemason, laying the cornerstone for? The United States Capitol. And it's not just the Capitol. Those ceremonies, those rituals were used in the building of the Washington Monument and the White House. They were, as, as well as many, many other buildings. The lore of Freemasonry marks Washington in other hidden ways as well. Consider, for example, the number 33, cherished by the Masons. 33 is a very important number uh, in ancient mysticism. Uh, there's a reason that Jesus Christ was said to be 33. There is a reason that there are 33 vertebrae in our spine and that much of Freemasonry has to do with the concept of the body as a temple. 33 repeats throughout the Masonic house of the temple. There are 33 columns or, or pillars. Sure. Each one 33 feet tall. Yes. And the same number is built into one of DC's most famous sites. Is it coincidence that the, the cap on the Washington Monument? There is, there is no such thing as weighs, coincidence when, you, when you're dealing with the number 33. Weighs exactly? 3,300 pounds. Yeah, 3,300 pounds. That's right, the capstone matches that mystical number. Brown says the Freemasons influenced the founding of America in profound ways. And what he has to say may change what you think about how this country came to be. If you have a group of men who are Masons and simultaneously founding fathers, and part of their Masonic ideal is that all men are equal, of course that will be of an underlying theme in the founding of a country. Another important aspect of Freemasonry is this idea of freedom of religion. We talked about these books on the altar. It's inclusive, it's not exclusive. Exactly, that couldn't have said it better. Freemasons assumed members believed in a supreme being, but that's as far as it went. Religious freedom was built into Freemasonry, and many scholars say the Freemasons built it